The Apple II GS, despite essentially being an uprated Apple II, required an operating system to use most of the software available for it. It went through several iterations, culminating in System Software 6.0.1 in 1993. In this video, I'll show you how to install it and how to add a bunch of useful and not so useful software to the install. You'll be able to go from this to this. As a bonus, I'll also show you how to make your own desktop backgrounds, so keep watching until the end. You should note that I won't be covering the newer, unofficial versions of the OS, as I found them to be rather crash prone. First, you should install both the G Sport and GS Plus emulators for Windows. Both emulators are based off of an older emulator called Kegs, but G Sport has a couple of files that aren't included with GS Plus. Copy the lib directory, config.txt, and noboot.po from the G Sport directory to the GS Plus directory. You'll need to point the emulator to a ROM image the first time you load it. After you quit out of the menu, you'll be at a basic prompt. Hit F4 to go to the config menu and hit enter to select disks. First, you'll need to put disks in the drives. Insert the system disk from the system software in slot 5 drive 1. Next, you'll need a hard drive image. Insert gsos.hdv, which has been provided for you in the setup pack. Hit escape to start going back to the top config menu, and then select host fst configuration. This will let you select a folder on your computer that can be read inside the emulator. When you've got the bar in the folder you want, you'll have to press the space bar to select it instead of the return key. Next, select serial port configuration. Press the right arrow until port 0 says virtual image writer. Then go to virtual image writer configuration. Use the right arrow key to set the printer type to image writer LQ and the DPI to 720 by 720. Finally, set the speed to 8 MHz to give the computer a usable speed. Once you're back at the basic prompt, type PR pound 5 and hit enter to boot off the floppy. Hit initialize when the prompt comes up and type in whatever name you want to give the hard drive image. Next, go to Special and hit Shutdown. Once you're at the Shutdown screen, hit F4 to go back to the Config menu, and then press E to eject the hard drive image. Next, insert the Install, System Tools 1, System Tools 2, Fonts, and SynthLab disks into the first five hard drive slots, and put your hard drive image into the sixth drive. Now you can restart the computer. The installer should already have the hard drive image selected, and so you can hit Easy Update to start the install. Next, hit Customize to add some other stuff. I start off first by clicking Apple Bowl, then New Folder, naming it Games, and then you can hit Install. Then click SynthLab and hit Install, then perform this update. Then click Teach, go back up to the root folder, Make a new folder named Teach, and then hit Install again. Click 
click control panel sounds and now you want to hold the F1 key whenever you click on the other things to install. Click calculator, find file, RAM5, DOS 3.3 FST, HFS FST, Pascal FST, fonts all, media, Apple MIDI, printer Epson, image writer, and image writer LQ. Then click install again. Now hit quit. Go up to the root directory and open basic.system. Now hit F4, go to your disks, and eject all the disk images by pressing E. Then insert gsos.hdv in drive 1. Now you can type PR pound 7 and enter to boot into the system. Once the system's booted, go to the Apple menu, Control Panels, go down to Slots, and open it to make sure that Slot 1 is set to Printer. Next, go to Printer Port and set the BOD to 19,200. Finally, go to DC Printer and set the port to Printer and Printer Type to Image Writer LQ. Now you can shut it down yet again. To install HyperCard, you'll want to insert all six of the HyperCard disks in your hard drive slots. Double click on installer.tour to open the installer disk and double click the installer. Click the system 6.0 option and hit install. Once it's done installing you can quit out of it. Now you can shut the system down again. And eject all of the hypercard disks. First, you'll want to put in disk 1 and disk 2 from the setup pack into the floppy drives. Open up disk 1 and then open up the essential folder. Open up the hard drive. Now select all the files in essential and drag them on top of the system folder and hit continue when prompted. Click Replace All Duplicates. Select all the icons and drag them to the Icons folder on the hard drive. Open the System folder and drag the Patterns folder into it. You can now eject disk 1 by dragging it to the trash. Drag the utilities folder from disk 2 over to the hard drive. Close the hard drive window and open the fonts folder on disk 2. Reopen the hard drive, select all the fonts, and drag them to the system folder.
Now open after install, then open SCUA and run the SCUA installer. Hit continue and select Prodos on your hard drive and then hit open. Quit out of it. Next, open Fix Finder WS and run Fix Finder Wins inside of it. Select the finder and click Open. Now you'll need to put the system disk from the system software in the first floppy drive. You'll need to reboot onto that disk, and the quickest way is to run basic.system. Now type in PR pound 5 and hit enter. Open the error strings folder and run error strings. Click disks, select your hard drive, then system then System Setup, and Sys.Resources should already be selected for you to open. There's also something else you might want to do right now. Open up the Utilities folder, then the System Disk and Drive 1, and then you can drag RPackerFE to the System folder over there. Now you can shut down again. Click restart. You'll now see a bunch of icons appear during the boot up. The first thing you might want to do is go into the control panels and open up desk color. Select Pattern and save the default pattern in the Patterns folder that you put in the System folder earlier. Now you can try changing the pattern. The pattern will change after you close the panel. Now go down to Small Extras and open it. That sets the finder to not draw lines between items in the Extras menu. The next thing you should do is open Utilities, double click on Init Master, then go to the Extras menu and select Init Master at the bottom. Click the far right icon at the top. Select Apple Disk 5.25 and click on Unmark, and then click OK. This stops it from checking the 5 and a quarter inch drives every time the finder loads. And now I'm going to go back to the control panel to change the desktop background again. This time, I'll select a graphic. Now I'm going to insert the optional one disk. You should note that the 2GS has a whooshing effect when it draws windows. If you want to get rid of that effect, you can go to kill whoosh on this disk. Everything on the optional disks is optional stuff. It might have special installation instructions, so read the doc files first. And now I'm actually going to install Kill the Whoosh. So move this one to the system folder. And move this one to icons. Now I'm inserting the optional two and opening line picks disks.
The first thing I'm going to install from this disc is Slick's Launch. It's a performance hog, but it has a really cool zoom in effect when you launch programs. The next thing I'm going to install from this disc is Opening Line. This gives you splash screens when you boot the computer. To install it, you need to go into your system folder, then into system.setup, and drag taglines into it. Then you open the ol.pix disk and drag the folder that's on it into the system.setup folder. Inside the folder are different splash screens that will display when you boot. Look through them and delete any you don't want to see. To finish the install, double click ol.install. Type in the path name for your hard drive. Here it's gsos.hd. Hit 3 for the default speed. Yes to this if you're running at 8 MHz like I told you to. No to this. Now you can restart the system yet again. The first time you boot with opening line, you won't see the splash screen as it has to set some stuff up, but the next time you boot, you'll see a splash screen. The next program that I recommend installing is ProBoot. This makes it really easy to boot with floppies in the emulator. You'll need to drag ProBoot.fx to the system folder. Then run the installer. Select ProDOS on your hard drive. You can select the processor speed that different drives will boot with, even though I'm not sure if that actually works in the emulator or not. The Choices folder consists of things that may not work that well together, so I provided Choices. This first one is menu bar stuff. Slickstop makes the menu bar disappear when you're not using it and some other stuff, and I personally don't like it that much. I prefer to use a combination of Auto Menu and Shady Bar. Drag auto menus to the system folder and the icon file to icons. Then you can drag shady bar to the system folder. Now you have a nice pretty shaded menu bar. If you want to adjust the options for auto menus, they're in the control panel. Auto menus will make the menus pop up without having to hold the mouse button, which is rather nice when your mouse button isn't working very well like mine is. <laughs> I've also got window minimizers, extra ways to shut down the computer, and stuff for multitasking. You'll really need to read the documentation for those because the 2GS was not designed for multitasking at all. The docs disk has documentation for the included software. Then there's SuperClock. If you want a menu bar clock, just run the installer from the disk. Be sure to install the init cdev version if you want to use it. There's a couple of other utilities included that you might want to try. These are like init master where they show up in your finder extras menu. There's desktop doctor and scarab whatever. First, there's Scarab, which will delete all the finder data files within whatever directory you've selected.
Then there's Desktop Doctor, which can be used to rebuild the desktop database. Click Begin. SynthLab apparently doesn't properly register its icons, so you should point these icons to your SynthLab install. The final extra works best if you reboot into the system disk floppy you added RPAC or two earlier. Go to ProBoot. Select the 3.5 inch floppy drive and reboot. Click your hard drive, then select Compact Resources from the Extras menu. This compacts resource forks, saving you a very tiny amount of space. Here it only saved 23 kilobytes, but it's something, I guess. To convert a picture from your PC to a desktop background, we'll be using GIMP on the PC end and Super Convert 4 on the 2GS end. First, load GIMP. Next, load your image. You'll need to select an area of your image of the correct aspect ratio for the 2GS. Select Fixed Aspect Ratio at a 1.6 to 1 ratio. This way, the ratio will be correct no matter which area you select. Everything inside the box will be what you see on the 2GS. So go to the Edit menu and copy the selection. Then paste it as a new image. Save it if you want to. Next, go to Image and then Scale Image. Rescale it to 320 by 200 resolution. Then you go to Export As. And export it to a directory shared with the 2GS and use the .bmp extension. You'll need to check compatibility options and check the option to not write the color space information. Also, don't export with more than 24-bit color. Now you load SuperConvert, which I've already installed in the emulator right here. Click IBM PC and Compatibles. Bitmap format should already be selected. Click Load. Next, go to Volumes, Host, and select the image you want and click Accept. Set the graphic mode to 640 by 240 dither mode. Use the default color palette. Also, use the pattern dither rendering algorithm. Then, click Normal Remap. And then it'll display the results on the screen. Click to get past it, then click on Save under Save Formats. You'll want to save it as Apple Preferred. The size should be the same as the original. You can now quit. Now go to Control Panels and Desk Color. Then go to Open Graphic and find the image. It 
It'll replace the background when you close the control panel. And now you have a new desktop picture. I hope you found this video to be useful. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't. And see you next time.